Hi guys, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. Welcome to my channel. Today's video is a collection of some of my favorite frame makeovers. I know a lot of people are interested in how they can make over old frames that they have lying around or that they've thrifted. So I've put together this collection instead of you having to go through my videos to find them. I hope that you enjoy today's projects. I picked up this frame from the thrift store for about a dollar. Now it didn't have any artwork in it and there was some imperfections on the frame but that's okay I saw the potential. I'm using some scissors to separate the backing from the outside of the frame and then I'm gluing back down the backing on the side there. I am going to be using the backing for the base of my artwork so I'm going to have to trim a little bit off to make sure that it fits nicely in the frame. Unfortunately, the glass of this frame was also glued in, so I am going to have to just leave that in there while I move on to the next step. I'm going to be giving the frame two coats of Dixie Belle's Vintage Duck Egg Chalk Mineral Paint. Chalk Mineral Paint is really, really great to use. Even on shiny surfaces, it sticks really well. Now this is a decor piece. If it was furniture and it was this shiny, I would probably use a bonding primer like Slick Stick, but this is just a decor piece that's going to look pretty on a wall, so I'm not too worried. While my paint is drying, I'm going to get started on my artwork. So I'm just trimming a little bit more off the backing with my craft knife and also the help of my scissors. And then once I've got it to the size that I want, I'm going to apply two even coats of Dixie Belle's Cashmere Limited Edition Full Color. This is a chalk paint and it's a lovely antique cream tone. I'm then grabbing my brocant transfer. This has eight pages of beautiful French style transfer designs and it was tricky picking just one design to go on my artwork. It's just absolutely beautiful. Let me know in the comments if you have tried the brocant transfer. In the end, I decided that I was going to use these two chickens and the lovely typography that goes with it. So I'm trimming that out and I'll put my transfer off to one side for use later. And now I'm just going to work out how I want to position it on my backing there. So I've removed the paper backing and then I'm pressing down my design. Once I have it in place, I'm using the transfer stick to burnish and to start rubbing the design. You can see I'm lifting it as I'm rubbing it. You definitely wanna do this, but do it slowly in case you miss a spot. You can always press the design back down and continue rubbing. Now it's usually recommended that you seal your paint before applying an IOD transfer. I'm not having any issues here because my paint is thoroughly dry. Once I have my transfer down, I'm sealing it with Dixie Belle's Easy Peasy Spray Wax. This probably isn't really necessary because my design is going to be behind glass, but I did it as a little bit of extra insurance. So I'm putting my artwork back in the frame and then I am going to turn it over and use my craft knife to scrape off any excess paint from the glass. I want this to have more of an aged appearance, so I'm using a combination of a wet wipe and some fine grit sandpaper to distress back my paint. The wet wipe helps to soften the paint to make sanding it a little bit easier. Another reason that I used the wet wipe before sanding is that I found that if I was too vigorous with my sanding that I actually went not only through my vintage duck egg but I started to take the black paint that was on the frame originally off and I didn't want that. I liked the contrast of that black frame showing through. And here's our finished chicken artwork. I really love this piece. It was a very easy project to do and I hope that it will inspire you to grab some of those ornate frames that you see at the thrift store and to use an IOD transfer to create your own artworks. 
Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. For our next project, our final project today is this frame that I got for 50 cents. It was still in the plastic. So I'm going to give it a good clean and then I'm going to take it apart. This time I could take the glass out and I'm grabbing the Trimmings 3 mold and working my Jovi air dry clay into one of the designs there. I'm going to cast four of the same Trimmings molds there and we are going to add that detail to the frame. Next, I'm going to arrange the castings on the frame. You can see that I am positioning it and tearing off the excess clay where needed. And I also decided that to make it look a little bit tidier that I was going to add something else in the corners. So I'm gluing down the molds that I've already cast. I'm using a strong wood glue. And then I am grabbing the fleur de -lis mold and I'm going to cast the smaller of the fleur de -lis designs. And I'm going to put one in each each corner. If you're new to making things with your IOD mold, I definitely suggest dusting them with cornstarch. This will definitely help you release your clay easier. Once I have all the fleur de -lis cast, I'm going to glue each of them down, being careful to gently bend them to mold them to my other castings. I'm then using a wet wipe to wipe off any excess glue. The next day I discovered that I had quite a few gaps where my clay had shrunk. I usually paint my molds, but I didn't this time. I think that may be why it shrunk so much. I'm using a bit of excess clay to fill in the gaps. I'm being very, very gentle though, and I'm just working it in, trying to make it as seamless as possible. I'm also using the end of a paintbrush to work the clay into those trickier areas. I'm then using a wet wipe to just gently smooth out my clay. I'm then using Dixie Belle's French Linen Chalk Mineral Paint to paint my entire frame. I'm being very gentle as I am still working with some fresh clay where I filled in the gaps. And I am changing direction of my brush to make sure that I'm getting paint into all of those little nooks and crannies. On my second coat, I found that using a water mister while I was painting helped move the paint into those trickier areas to get to, and it also helped give me a bit of a smoother finish. Once my paint was dry, I sealed the entire frame using Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. Once my clear coat was dry, I started layering colours. I first used Dixie Belle's Au Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain and I'm using a wet wipe to wipe back the excess so that the Au Naturel colour is sitting in the details. We're going for a weathered and worn layered effect here. We're going to be using a few different tones to achieve this. When the Au Naturel layer was dry, I grabbed Dixie Belle's Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain and again, I am laying it on and then I am wiping it back and I am loving how these two colors are working together. You could definitely achieve a similar look with waxes or glaze if you do not have the products I'm using today. In some areas, I used my water mister to remove even more product. When the Tobacco Road Stain layer was dry, I came in with some of Dixie Belle's Fluff Chalk Mineral Paint and I'm actually dry brushing the paint on. I'm hitting the high points and I'm also using a wet wipe to wipe back any areas where it's a little bit too heavy. If you have not tried dry brushing, it's where you get paint on your brush, you then dab off the excess and you use what little paint you have on your brush to paint your surface. You also want to use a light hand and you will find that it really highlights and brings out details. 
When that coats dry, I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax and I'm just hitting some of the details. I'm not going too heavy here. Next, we're going to work on the artwork to go in the frame. So I've cut out some drop cloth and I'm using the insert that was already in the frame to work out how big I need it to be. I'm then trimming off the excess. You could definitely use paper or cardstock for this step instead, but I really loved the idea of using drop cloth. I thought that it would contrast nicely with the transfer that we're about to use. So I'm grabbing the brocante transfer again, and you can see that I am using the frame over the top of the possible designs to decide which one I am going to use. I picked this one, I thought that the colors were lovely and I loved the typography. I'm going to have the hard backing from the frame behind my drop cloth as I apply my transfer. This is going to help me ensure that it adheres. I've peeled off the paper backing and now I'm using the transfer stick to begin burnishing my design. So I am rubbing carefully and holding the drop cloth in place as I go. And I'm also lifting the plastic and checking that I have everything adhered before I move on. I didn't have any issues with the transfer sticking to the drop cloth. I found it really easy actually, and I really love this look. So I'm gently running my fingers over the design to make sure that it's all adhered. And then I am going to make sure that it fits nicely, make sure I don't need to trim off anything extra. And then I'm cleaning off the glass that's going to go over the top of my design. And I'm not gonna have to seal this because it does have the glass protecting it. So I've put the backing back in and we're done. I'm really happy with how this lovely artwork came out. You can sit it on a shelf or it does have the attachments on the back to be hung on the wall. I'm definitely gonna to have to do more with transfers on drop cloth. Our first project is this ladder style frame that I found for $3 and I thought it had a lot of potential. But my first step is to take off the cord that someone had wrapped around and actually nailed to this frame. So that was a little bit tricky. I'm taking that off and of course I'm saving that because you never know when those sorts of things might come in handy. Next, I'm going to clean the entire piece and then take out the glass and the backing. I started painting this with Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint, but as I was painting, I noticed a lot of bleed through. So I decided that I was going to have to use something that had a stain blocker in it. So rather than adding the stain blocker and doing a whole new color, I grabbed Dixie Belle's Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. Now this has a built-in stain blocker and a built-in top coat. It's very close to Drop Cloth. It's a lovely cream, so I thought it would be perfect. Once my paint was dry, I added some cornstarch to my olive crest mold and we're going to be using that little label down the bottom there. So I'm working my Jovi air dry clay into the label and I'm going to be making three of these, one to sit under each of the little frames there. And I had to sort of squish very gently and manipulate the label so that it would fit there. I thought about also maybe adding a stamp, doing an impression, but in the end, I decided that I would actually leave these plain so that someone could customize them if they wanted to. Next, I am going to add a strong wood glue to the back of each of my castings and I'm attaching it to the frame. I'm then going to paint over each of these castings with the Endless Shore Silk Mineral Paint. I find that if I paint my castings before they're completely dry, that I get less cracking. Next, we're going to work on the artworks to go in the frames. I grabbed my ephemeral melange transfer. I've already used this before. There is so many beautiful designs in this transfer, but I needed something that was going to fit in the frame. So I was a little bit more limited. So I'm just using the backing that came with the frames to work out approximately how big of a space I have to work with. So 
So I decided what I wanted for my center design and then I went back to the booklet and I did get a few options out, but in the end I decided to have the two different colored roses either side. Next I am cutting up some drop cloth to go behind the transfer so I'm just using the backing and lining up the drop cloth and trimming it to size and then I'm going to use the transfer stick to start burnishing the designs down. So I'm carefully peeling the plastic off, pressing it down and then I'm starting to rub. So you want to carefully lift your plastic as you rub but don't be too quick just in case you've missed a spot. So I'm repeating the same process for each of the transfers and I just love how this drop cloth looks behind these lovely roses. So you definitely want to have something hard behind your drop cloth so that when you are rubbing your transfer down that it uh, comes off pretty easily. I did have to cut up a piece of cardboard as a piece of backing because one of the frames did not have any backing in it so we had to make our own and it also didn't have three pieces of glass. So to start off with, I have put the designs back in without glass, but later on you will see that I did manage to find some glass in my stash that I could use here. So eventually I am going to protect the transfers with the glass. Next, I'm going to add some little screw in hooks to go underneath each of our lovely images and labels there. So this is going to be a really lovely functional piece that I'm envisioning someone could have in their entryway to hang maybe hats off or, or bags. Really, I just think I wanted it to be a functional piece that someone could have in their home. Next, I am using a flathead screwdriver to distress the edges. And here I am replacing the glass in each of the frames. Finally, I'm going to attach two more screw in hooks at the top of our piece here. And I'm also going to attach some twine as well, but really you could just hang this from the wall using those hooks. And here's our finished entryway organizer. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think that it is functional, but also beautiful. Let me know what you think of this project in the comments. I picked this frame up for $2 from the thrift store and thought it would be perfect for today's projects. I've seen a few wreaths on Pinterest using frames like this and thought that with some IOD molds, we could turn it into something really beautiful. So I've removed the backing and now we're going to be using IOD's Classic Elements and Olive Crest molds. I'm out of my amazing casting resin, so I'm going to be using craft cast resin. I also have this on my website available. To make this very similar to amazing casting resin, you pour part A into a cup, part B into a cup. They've got to be equal parts. And then when you're ready, you mix them together and you stir them well. After I've stirred them well, I'm going to very carefully pour them into my molds. So this looks sort of yellow in color, but it does dry into a lovely cream color, as you can see here. So it's been about 15 minutes. So I'm going to take my castings out of the molds. So this is a pretty plain frame, but as you can see, by adding these molds, I'm going to turn it into something ornate and quite inspired by the Victorian era. To attach these, I'm going to be using my Gorilla Super Glue Gel, and it only takes a couple of minutes to fully adhere, so it's perfect for this project. You could also use hot glue for this or a wood glue. It just takes a lot longer for it to actually stick down if you use those, so I elected to use this. So as you can see, I've just put a strip down, I'm positioning my castings and then I'm going to let them dry. Once the glue's dry and my castings are secure, I'm painting each of these 
molds with Dixie Belle's chocolate chalk mineral paint. I want this to be a sort of wood tone similar to what the frame is already because we're going to have peaks of it showing through once we have completed our next step. So you don't need to do any priming on these castings. They are ready to go and chalk paint sticks to pretty much anything. So after I've let it dry, I'm now coming in with Dixie Belle's Crackle Medium. So I've stirred it up really well and I'm applying it onto my my frame now the thicker you apply the crackle medium the bigger your cracks are if you put it on thin you are going to get finer cracks you've then got to let this dry completely before the next step there are quite a few crackle medium products on the market so it really is up to you what you're going to use I've even seen people use PVA glue so again it's just up to you so my crackle medium is completely dry and now I'm coming in with Dixie Belle's buttercream chalk mineral paint I've really loaded up my brush and I'm trying not to do too many swipes with my brush as you may distress the crackle that's underneath it, you may interrupt the process of it and even pull it away. So definitely try to only do a few swipes of your paint as you don't want to interrupt that process. You won't get that crackle effect if you keep fussing at it. I'm also using a really light hand here. I'm not applying much pressure at all, just enough to get that paint on there and to spread it out. And as I'm coming up to my more intricate details, I'm actually just sort of gently dabbing on the paint as opposed to doing lots of swipes with my paintbrush. And you will see in a little bit that I actually get a little bit of a smaller paintbrush to get into some of the areas. Again, you really don't wanna fuss at this too much. This is very hard for me not to fuss at it too much because I am a bit of a perfectionist like a lot of you probably are but you've just got to trust that process and just be very gentle when you're putting your paint over your crackle. As I'm going for quite a vintage look here, I did choose to have the wood showing through underneath and obviously that chocolate chalk mineral paint up the top, but you could definitely go in a different direction with this. You could have a bright pop of color underneath and then put your crackle medium over the top of your dry paint and have a black or a white and you could have that bright color popping through. It really is up to you and what project you're working on and what you're trying to achieve. But Crackle is a really fun product to use and especially if you're looking for a rustic sort of weathered look. Once this is dry, I'm going to seal the entire frame with easy peasy spray wax before I move on to my next step. Next, I'm going to get my supplies together. I want a little wreath down in the corner and I want to layer a lot of greenery and natural elements to give this a bit of a spring Easter feel. Again, this is going to be up to you and what you want to achieve. I'm using my hot glue gun here to attach everything and I'm just putting a big spot of it down there where the nest can go. I'm having the nest off center and you want a nest that is in proportion to your frame. You wouldn't want anything too small but you also don't want to go too big here and have it overpower the frame. I'm then going to start layering in some greenery so I'm just putting a few spots of um, hot glue down and then I'm coming in with my fern style greenery there. I want that to be a bit further to the background so you really want to think about the layers when you are arranging florals. I am not an expert by any means but I just do what feels right and I want the sort of plainer flowers further towards the back so we are putting the ferns down first and I'm also thinking about the shape I want them to have a bit of a curved shape to follow the shape of the frame so I'm positioning them in a way that will complement the curves and the hot glue is going to help hold it in place I'm also using a little spatula there you can see to apply pressure on the glue without burning myself I then want to add these lavender style uh, flowers to sit just on top of the ferns so they're just going to be a nice little pop of colour but not too overpowering either so again just following the curve there and pressing it underneath the little nest and making sure that I've got enough glue to hold it in place. I'm also going to come in and add some more ferns as well just to fill it in a little bit more and if you're trying this at home remember you can use whatever you want whatever you have access to there's really a lot of different ways that you can go with this you could create more of a summer feel as opposed to a spring feel it really is up to what you are trying to create. 
Next, I'm going to come in with some faux moss style plants here. I got it from a craft store here in Australia called Spotlight. You can probably get something similar on Amazon. I'm adding some glue to the nest and I'm just going to add some of that brighter green moss. I really love the different tones of green and it just really adds a lot of depth to the piece when you're able to have those different tones. I'm also going to add some around the base of the frame as well and I'm not being super Super careful about how much or how little I use. I'm just adding some glue and then pressing in the moss and whatever stick sticks. And again, there is no right or wrong way to do this. Just go with whatever you like. Next I grabbed some elements from a Easter pick that I had pulled apart and I was just working out how I wanted them to sit and in the end I did decide that I would grab a couple of pieces of it and actually bend it to sit underneath the nest. It, it, this is just something you've got to play with. You've got to have a bit of a think about what's going to work for the design you're trying to create. And again, I just love adding all these different elements, the moss, the ferns, the lovely nest there. It all has those different textures, which really just adds to a really beautiful spring feel. From the same pick, I also took these little berry sprig things here. I thought that the white contrasted nicely with the green and purple tones that we had going on. So again, just adding that other tone just adds that other layer of interest. So I've just added a little bit of glue and then I'm also going to thread it a little bit into the little bird's nest as well to help hold it. And I'm adding a little bit more glue here and there just to secure it in place. I'm also going to add some more of those little white berries on the other side as well. Now I want to add some eggs to my little bird's nest there. So I'm going to take three small eggs from Riot Art. First, I'm going to give them a base coat of Dixie Bell's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint, and I'm just going to dab it on. I'm not being super careful to get it really smooth. Once that's dry, I'm going to come in with Dixie Bell's Vintage Duck Egg. I want these to have a little bit of a blue tinge, and again, I'm not being super careful to get full coverage here. I just want to get a light coat on here, and once I've actually got all three of the eggs painted, I'm going to grab a wet wipe, and I'm going to dab off some of the paint to give it more of a sort of mottled look here. I think it adds just a little bit of realism. And then I'm coming in with some chocolate chalk mineral paint and I'm using my paintbrush to flick little specks onto the eggs. Next, I'm going to arrange the eggs in my nest, but I also found some cute little feathers that I picked up from Spotlight, that same craft store that I mentioned previously. And I thought again, that added that touch of realism. So we're going to glue those down first with my hot glue gun. I've only got two in there. I don't want it to be too crowded. So I've just added a little dab of glue there to glue that down. I'm gonna glue the other feather down as well. And then I'm going to repeat the same process and glue the eggs in the nest as well.
once I've got all the eggs glued in, I did decide to add a little bit of glue to the sides of each of the eggs to actually have them stick together as well. I just thought it would add a little bit more stability. And here's our finished French country wreath. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think that that crackle really aged the frames and the beautiful IOD molds really gave this a beautiful Victorian classic elegance. Let me know what you think of today's project in the comments. For our final project, we're going to be using this frame that I thrifted for a dollar. My first step is to remove the backing and the glass, and I'm going to then be using some artist paper, and I'm going to pull that out of the book. And I've got the insert from the frame, so I know how big of an area that I have to work with. So I'm going to use this. I'm tracing around the outside, and then I'm going to trim the paper to size. Next, I'm going to be using the new Melange paint inlay. This has eight pages of so many beautiful French country designs. This is perfect if you have not tried inlays before because there is lots of little projects that you can do and you can spread this over so many projects, guys. I absolutely adore this. I've already done a project using one of the designs from the inlay, so make sure you check out the 2023 spring release playlist if you'd like to see that. For this project, I'm going to be using this lovely rooster artwork. As soon as I saw this, I started hunting for suitable frames. So as you can see, we're not going to get the whole image, but we're going to get most of it. So I'm going to apply a coat of Dixie Bell's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint to my artist paper. I want this as a base so that my paint doesn't sink in as quickly as it might if I was doing this straight on the paper because you need your paint to be wet for a paint inlay to work. When the first coat of paint is dry, I'm coming in with another coat of paint. I'm going a little bit thicker here because I need enough so that my paint inlay will be able to have the image transferred. So I'm working my way across the paper. This is an older paint, so you will see me picking out a few dried bits and pieces, but I don't like to waste anything. So I'm using this today. So I'm gonna apply it to the whole thing. And again, I need that paint to be wet. So I am working as quickly as I can. It's a hot day and I wanna get this whole thing covered and my paint inlay down before this coat dries. Now that I have enough paint, I'm going to place my paint inlay design side down. The grid should be facing up at you. I'm pressing it into my wet paint, smoothing it with my fingers, and then I'm going to grab a brayer and I'm going to use that to apply some pressure to make sure that I've got good contact. So I'm going to work my way across the paper and make sure that I haven't missed any areas. I'm then going to grab my water mister bottle and I'm going to mist the entire surface thoroughly. This is going to help activate the paint in the inlay. And then I am grabbing my brayer again and very carefully going over the top one last time. Once my paint inlay is dry, it's had about 30 minutes to dry. It's a hot day. I'm going to mist the whole thing and then I'm going to give it one minute for the water to sit. If you have any resistance, you need to come back in with the mister and then I'm going to very carefully and slowly pull my inlay away. Now you want to be careful here not to rip it because you will get another use, possibly even another two uses out of this. So you definitely want to be careful. If you do not have a water mister, that's fine. Just use a damp cloth. So I'm going to set this paint inlay off to the side to dry, and then I am going to come in with some of Dixie Belle's Tobacco Road. I've watered it down, and I am actually going to be flicking bits of the Tobacco Road onto my paper. I want to give this a bit more of an aged appearance. Now, ordinarily, you would want to then seal your paint inlay, but this is going to be behind glass, so I'm not worried about that. So I will not be sealing mine today. If you need to seal it, you can use a spray clear coat to do that. 
While this is drying, I'm going to grab my Olive Crest Mold and my Jovi Air Dry Clay and start work on the frame. I'm dusting my mold with cornstarch and then I'm working the clay into the scroll designs there. I'm going to be casting eight of those, uh, four of each of the different directions, and they're going to go in the corners. And then I'm also going to be doing a few other elements. I really wanna give this frame more of an ornate feel. When you're using clay, you'll want to roll it into a shape similar to the casting that you want to make and you're going to then press it into the molds. IOD molds have a micro rim which makes it very easy for you to get a nice clean edge. So I use my thumb and I push away from the mold and I find that the easiest way to work the clay in. And then I like to either use gravity to help me get it out or I pull the mold and I pull the castings out. If you haven't used molds before, the Olive Crest mold is a really great one to start with because of all the elements that you get in it. And I especially keep my eye out for cheap frames in the thrift stores so that I can do just this sort of a project. Next, I'm going to use a strong wood glue to glue all of my castings down. There's no right or wrong way to arrange your molds when you're doing a project like this, but I just tried to envision what those old French frames or ornate mirrors looked like, and I tried to have some symmetry with the same molds on either side. When I have all of my castings glued down, I'll use a wet wipe to clean off the glue. Next, I'm going to do two coats of Dixie Belle's Cactus Silk Mineral Paint. This is a beautiful green tone and I'm going to be doing some layering here. So green is not going to be the predominant color here. I just want it peeking through. So I'm going to paint very carefully over my molds because even though they've been setting for quite a while, I don't want to accidentally ruin any of the details. So I am being very gentle and I am using a synthetic brush. Once this has had a few hours to dry, I'm going to come in with Dixie Belle's Drop Cloth Chalk Mineral Paint. And at first I'm just brushing over the top of the molds and then I am working the paint around the rest of the frame. I still wanna see peaks of that green showing through, but it will take two coats of me to get the desired look. When this coat's dry, I am going to seal the entire thing with Dixie Belle's Gloss Clear Coat. Next, I'm going to give this more of an antique look with some Tobacco Road Voodoo Gel Stain. I've watered it down a bit and then I am very carefully applying it and I'm using a wet wipe to wipe back a lot of the excess. I want this to sit around the castings and in some of the details. You could definitely achieve a similar look if you were to apply some brown wax or perhaps even a brown paint wash. But also remember if this look isn't for you, you could just leave this step out. To age this up even further, I'm going to be using the Vintage Textures stamp, specifically the Crackle stamp. I'm going to be using the black permanent ink and you can see I'm just randomly pressing the stamp on the frame. I wanna give this an aged appearance so I'm not going for a uniform look. I'm pressing it all over the frame, including some of the molds. I just love these stamps. I think that they look so authentic and if you're someone who likes more of a vintage rustic look, this is definitely a stamp for you. Finally, I'm going to add some of Dixie Belle's gold gilding wax. I've got a little bit on my finger and I'm just running my finger along some of the casting details. Now that my artwork is dry and my frame is ready, I'm going to put them back together. I'm going to carefully place the glass back in the frame and then I am going to put the beautiful artwork that we just created using the inlay down and putting the backing on as well. And here's our finished artwork. I really 
really hope that you enjoyed this video collection and you can find the products used in this video on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button, like, comment, and share this out to a friend that you think might enjoy it.